Hey everyone, today we're going to talk about waterborne sealer application. In particular, the application of Bona sealers that have some added color, namely Bona Amber Seal, Bona Nordic Seal, and Bona Natural Seal. As you can see from our demonstration floor here, it's not difficult to get beautiful results on every job, but there are some keys you need to keep in mind to have success. So let's take a look back to see where we started in order to get here. Now, we know from our Bona Commandments that you can't get great finish results without the proper preparation underneath, which becomes even more important when you're dealing with any top layers that contain color. These could be stains, penetrating oils, sealers, finishes, dyes, glazes, any other type of tinted product. Poor preparation and bad sanding techniques will show up even more when these types of products are put on top. As the pigments tend to gather in scratches, sander marks, and other uneven areas, highlighting those errors in the surface. Following the guidelines for proper floor preparation, we ran through our regular abrasive choices and grit sequences and did our final sanding cut with 80 grit Bona Blue Discs on the power drive. We then want to step up the grit again to Bona Black 120 grit and switch to the Bona Multi-Disc. This will burnish the grain making it tight so that our sealer will sit up on top and not soak down into the surface too much. Remember that in general one coat of sealer or finish applied at 500 square feet per gallon is only as thick as a single piece of copy paper when dried, about one mil or one one thousandth of an inch. And we want as much of that one mil as possible to be sitting up on top of our flooring surface. After we've taken care of properly sanding the corners, edges, and other detail areas, then it's time to clean the floor. Instead of just vacuuming, we highly recommend that you use a Bona Tampico brush on a dust containment buffer hooked up to a vacuum system. This natural fiber brush scrubs 99% of the fine dust off the floor and out of the seams and soft grain, which is where that fine dust causes grain rays if not removed. All right, so now we're finally ready to put down our sealer. Um, we're gonna put Nordic seal down on this section so we can capture on the, the stain section and the natural section. And when you're putting down the colored sealers, it's really not any more difficult than putting down the regular sealers. There's just a couple things that we have to pay a little more attention to. Mainly that's feathering and pouring from wet into wet and not getting a puddle out here too far when we pour our product down, risking that then we might get it set up on the edges and double up on our color. So we've also got our game plan down. Uh, we know if there's uh, restrooms, bedrooms, any other things like that that might cause us a problem, make us stop. So we finished those out, pulled the dry line. We've also checked our temperature, relative humidity, airflow. Uh, we've shaken up our product really well to make sure any of the pigments have gotten well dispersed within the product. Uh, we rinsed out our applicators, took those down to just damp. Uh, you don't want those dripping. We don't want to risk that we're going to uh, dilute the product and especially any of those pigments and have a light area to begin with. So this is probably one of the more critical stages too when we're just doing our starting row, right? Doing our starting puddle, you really want to get going. Um, easier to do with two people, but today we've only got a, a single person applying and doing all the cutting in and everything, so we'll just make it work. But just remember that, I don't want to pour a puddle, have it sit here for a while and then try to come back to it. So I'm going to pour this out. I'm also going to pour from the side like this and not straight up and down because I also want to really minimize or eliminate any splashing. Um, so I'll pour my puddle and get going. Again, we want to get the product spread out, we'll come back and feather everything after we kind of get our initial spread here. These products tend to be, especially the Nordic Seal, Natural Seal, tend to be a little thicker. Um, Amber Seal does also, but uh, definitely Nordic Seal and Natural Seal, you may notice a little more of a thick consistency on these products. 
Again, don't get too concerned right when you're starting. Um, you know, with some streaks or any color variations, because we're going to spend a lot of time and make sure we go back and even everything out. So I want to load up my applicator a little bit here. And then I'm going to go back and make, just make my feathering pass. So if I'm going under cabinets or whatever right here, that'll be fine. Get to the end. Now, whoops. That's something you want to try to avoid is splashing. I also want to make sure that I pad out in line with the grain, especially with these products. Don't pad out across the grain and risk that you're going to leave a, a mark there, a heavy mark. And then it all comes down to feathering and carefully feathering. So if I leave a mark like that in the floor, it's probably going to stay there. And we also want to make sure, what I'd recommend is that you cut in behind yourself and not ahead of yourself. Again, we don't want to risk that our cutting guy cuts in two or three or four feet ahead of us, and then we can't get back to it soon enough with the snow plow. Uh, and then we go over it again, and now we've got a double layer of color or pigment in that area. So cut in behind yourself. And then fingertip pressure. If you want to know how to get an even coat, don't try to adjust the pressure on the applicator yourself while you're dragging it. Just make sure that you're using fingertip pressure. Let the applicator do the work. So here's a good example of, again, cutting in behind myself. And the cutting in is, is crucial. I want to take off like an airplane. I don't want to set this thing down into the floor really hard, pull it out, pull it directly up. I want to almost hold it up on the back side and then just bring it out and you can see how nicely it feathers any of those marks out that I had. You also may notice sometimes when you're using a snow plow tool, you get a little bit of a heavy edge off the top and that's just because that applicator is cutting into your previous layer that you put down. So usually they'll, they'll flow out and you don't have to be concerned about those. But if you want to, you can also just make a feathering pass and go back. So you can see now I've got these two lines kind of coming in, you know, that came off the top of the applicator. So if I want, I can take my snowplow tool, my T-bar, and just lightly set it down as I'm going. And then just pull it back across those lines to get them out of there and then feather up when you get to the other side. Again, but we want to use, you can minimize those lines by just using fingertip pressure, but they'll usually always be there. They're there when you use them with a, a clear product too. They're just not as visible. Make sure you have good light to work with. Um, and again, it's always a little more useful if you've got another set of eyes on this versus just yourself doing it. Whenever you make those feathering passes, Again, just make sure that you pat out the applicator real well because we don't want to go ahead and set it back down and then leave a heavy mark there when we're trying to take care of issues like that. So here I'm coming back with my cut-in pad to cut in behind myself. Yet I'm not worried about some of these marks and stuff when I'm putting them down with my, my snowplow tool um, because I can come back and I can take my cut-in pad and I can easily feather those out into the floor. What you want to be careful of is the guy who's using the, the cut-in pad that I'm not pressing down, you know, and one, leaving a heavy mark or a stop mark there, and that's obviously exaggerated. Um, but a lot of times the guy who's cutting in is putting it down thinner. So I'm not setting this thing down on the full pad. I've got it just at a slight angle, just so I've got those back bristles contacting the floor lightly so that I can feather any marks out of the floor. Also, it's pretty critical that we don't stop in the middle of the floor anywhere. So if I'm coming out, if I've got, uh, say I've got some floor outlets and I stop or try to go around them, you know, you can see how that's likely going to leave some marks in the floor. So the best thing to do would be to tape those off and just drag right over them but then also go back and uh, use your cut-in pad 
to feather any of those marks out around items like that that you've got to work around. You also notice that we are putting this down on a, a dark stained floor. Um, on the labels, we don't recommend using the white tinted products on dark stained floors. It's not that you can't, it's just that it accentuates everything even more. So, uh, but we also know it's one of the bigger trends. Uh, again, to get an antique look is to put a, a dark brown stain uh, down and then white tinted product over the top uh, to get that antique look. So we'll leave this line here in the floor, see if these come out, if it flows out. If not, then uh, we'll show you how we can try to do a repair on that. But you want to take your time and go slow and just do things right. Um, if we can get the product down correctly here, it's going to make, obviously, everything a lot easier. We don't have to go back and, and do any repairs. Uh, another key is, Again, I don't want to pour my next line out here and risk that that puddle is going to set up on either side and then give me a, a dry line right there. So always pour your puddle wet into wet. So usually if I'm working by myself in a situation like this, I'm cutting in behind myself, and I'll go ahead and make two or three passes and then come back to both sides and make make my feathering marks with my cut-in pad. You also need to think about, uh, in a lot of houses today, right, you've got floor-to-ceiling windows. And if I happen to leave marks anywhere, where do I want to leave them? So if I've got floor-to-ceiling windows over on this side, I really want to be careful in this part of the floor that I don't leave any marks there. I'd rather pull anything over on the far side where I've just got walls to deal with and not floor to ceiling windows, uh, as opposed to pulling everything up to that window and leaving my marks possibly, possibly there. So same issues when we're applying regular sealer and the colored sealers working our way out of the room. Right, we can push pull. Some people um, will even just walk in it. Uh, what I like to do is I'm going to work my way a little bit down doing S-curves and then um, straightening those out. Again, I want to be careful when I'm um, feathering that I don't leave heavy marks with the bottom of my applicator. And then every once in a while, I'm going to jump out here and move my puddle that's remaining a little closer to the wall. So don't work yourself too close to the wall to start with um, or you'll have a tough time getting out. So here I'm going to go ahead and cut in basically ahead of myself, but I can reach out, grab that heavy mark, come back here, pat it out. And then we're going to do our S turns to get out of here. If I feel like I need to spread a little more product out, I can get it out there and pull it back in. And the key here is to do your very best to make sure you're getting even coverage with the product all the way across the floor. Now here I am, you'll notice I am padding out across the grain, but I know I'm gonna be on that right away. So I'm reaching back to the wall and I'm barely letting it sit down and I'm pulling it back. Okay, patting out to make sure I don't have any extra, reaching back to the wall, pulling it back. So you've got to think that every time you set your applicator down, especially in this situation, am I leaving a mark in the floor? So I usually don't like to pat out or to feather by pushing away, but this may be one of those instances where it's better to do that so I don't leave heavier marks in the floor right there. So if I feather out by pushing away and making sure I have a pretty dry applicator to begin with, I can take care of those marks before they, they set up on me. So then I just make another little quick run just to move my puddle a little closer to the wall. Some guys even prefer then to just walk in the product. 
Um, so they'll walk all the way down just to make sure they don't leave any applicator marks on their last pass. That's up to you, whatever your method is. If it works for you and working your way out of the room uh, and you're not leaving marks and getting an even application rate, then keep on doing it. So again, to prevent heavy marks on this, I want to feather away from myself. Again, I'm patting out to make sure I don't have extra product underneath. And I'm not pushing this down into the floor. I'm just basically letting it float on top so that I'm not getting then a thin mark as I'm trying to avoid heavy marks. Now, this is also not the place, you know, usually if you've got a clear sealer and you're working your way out and you've got a little extra when you come to your stopping point, you might take this and just spread this out into the floor. I do not want to do that here um, because then I'm going to be doubling, tripling, quadrupling the amount of color in just that spot. So you can have something set up. Usually it's, I like to use my cut in pad and just a garbage can at the end and you can soak up the extra, slough it off on the edge of the trash can, uh, make sure it's your own trash can uh, and then pick up the extra like that. All right, so one thing we want to talk about right before we put Nordic Seal down is just again, temperature, relative humidity, and airflow. You'll see right now we've got uh, about 36% relative humidity, about 70 degrees here in Denver. So not ideal conditions. I'd like it a little cooler if possible, a little more humid if possible too, but we know that's kind of what we're gonna get here. Um, so that why it's more important to make sure I've cut off my airflow because if I've got warm air and dry air moving across the floor, then it's gonna dry even faster. So think about how you can control those variables. So is there a way I could get you know, more humidity in the air? Probably not. Is there a way I could make the air cooler? I could turn on the AC if I have that available and then turn that off right before I start applying. And then how can I turn off and adjust the airflow? So those three critical variables we want to adjust first before we start messing with anything with the finish. Uh, another thing is just application rate. When we talk about feathering and using fingertip pressure on the applicator, any water-based sealer or finish that's about 30 to 35% solids, when you put it on at 500 square feet per gallon, you get about one mil of thickness left when it's dry. So that's one one thousandth of an inch or about as thick as a piece of copy paper. So that's why we say just use fingertip pressure. Don't try to mash the sealer or whatever into the floor um, or thin to win or whatever your, your uh, motto is there. Just use the applicator, let the applicator do the work. Use fingertip pressure. Your goal is to apply it as evenly as possible and just letting the applicator float across the floor is gonna do it a lot better than you trying to manipulate the pressure on that applicator. All right, so let's go ahead and put our Nordic seal down. Again, with these products, we, we do recommend just T-barring and cut-in pad. Um, I prefer to do everything else with a roller, and I know you can roll these too. A lot of guys are very successful even putting them down with a roller. But again, if we're trying to focus on best practices and what most people will have uh, success with, it's going to be putting it down with, with a T-bar. All right, so now we're down to our last colored product, a uh, colored sealer, Amber Seal. This product, I think, has been around for about 10 years. I don't know, time flies so fast, I'm not sure uh, exactly when we release this product. But it shouldn't be new to anybody. Um, but because it's one of the colored sealers, we wanted to include it. And same watch outs. I mean, you still don't want to leave stop-start marks, heavy marks, thin marks, uh, because it does have some amber pigment to it, and those will tend to show up uh, just like they will with the products that have the white pigment in them. Now this on top of a stain floor, especially a brown stain floor, is gonna be a very typical application for Amber Seal because it does give a lot of nice pop, maybe a little richer tone uh, to your brown tone stains. And then also when we use it over on the natural side, uh, a lot of people like to use it there to give, to give their water-based finish a little more of that oil look without actually having to even put an oil sealer or, or a stain on the floor. So, both of these are gonna be very typical applications for Amber Seal. 
But again, just a lot of the same watch outs as far as we're gonna cut in behind ourselves, uh, we're gonna run the whole length of the floor. If we think we got a heavy mark coming off the top of the T-bar, we can go do a feathering pass. So all the same things. All right, let's go ahead and get it put down. So again, you can see now that we're putting down all three of the sealers that it doesn't really matter which one we're putting down. Basically our application method is the same even if we were putting down a clear sealer. There's just certain parts of it that we wanna be a little more cognizant of and be thinking about while we're putting the product down. Otherwise, everything stays the same. So don't make it too complicated for yourself, but definitely think about some of the you know, the places in the floor, rooms, certain layouts that may cause you an issue um, with certain products as you're putting them down. So same here, I'm gonna S turn my way out. I'm gonna pat out. You know, I'm just holding the applicator up on the surface of the floor. I like to think of it just contacting the very top of that surface and not necessarily trying to drag a whole bunch of product back with me because um, I don't want to put it down too thin, you know, differently than the rest of the floor. So I find if I get a nice, a nice spread on it, Go ahead and pat out, reach out. And again, I don't want to clunk it down. I just want to reach out and I always start pulling it back even before it touches the floor. To bring it back in a nice feathering motion. So now we've come back um, we've given this first coat uh, its proper dry time. We put some extra airflow on it. We want to make sure it's good and dry before we come back and try to do anything else with it. Um, now, usually our process right in the classes, we talk about, hey, if we can do a really good job prepping the floor, get everything nice and smooth, uh, minimize or eliminate grain rays, we want to put down sealer coats and then not abrade. However, as a best practice, when you're working with any of these colored sealers, we would recommend that you come back in a braid and then do a, a wet tack so that you can see any issues that might be kind of hidden. Because a lot of times the, the sealer, it flowed out and you can kind of see, especially in the dark area, some streaks, maybe some heavy marks, maybe even a few light marks. Um, but on the natural area, it's much more difficult to see. But we still want to get those areas and address them if we need to. And just abrading it might be fine. Um, but we want to see those, take care of them, because if we don't before we put our coats of finish on, then it's too late. Then we've locked everything under those clear coats of finish. Much more difficult to go back now and try to correct those. So we would recommend as a best practice, go back, lightly abraid the floor, wet tack it to have any issues pop up so you can take care of them now. Either before we put on another coat of sealer, to try to even things out if needed, or we put on our finish coats. And here's your choices. So it may, that you, it may be that you just need one or two maroon pads uh, stacked on top of each other. That's gonna be our softest, uh, least aggressive method. Um, but in looking at your floor, and it may depend again on, are you on a natural floor? Did you use natural seal, Nordic seal, amber seal? Can you already see some issues? If you think you need to be a little bit more aggressive, then you can always add one or two bone of diamonds um, and you can add them like such. Uh, 180 or 240 grit would be fine. And we're gonna go quick. We're just really trying to use our abrasion not to grind anything off the floor. Remember, we've only got uh, at most one mil of thickness uh, from this sealer coat. So we don't wanna be real aggressive. We're not trying to take anything off. We're just trying to blend things and smooth things out, either before we put our finish coats on or before we put the next coat of sealer on. And the main reason we're doing it is to, one, smooth the floor, yes, but really to uh, bring out those issues that might be hard to, to find uh, and see. Uh, we wanna bring those out with our wet tack so we can take care of them now, okay? 
So we're going to go ahead and uh, abrade the whole floor. I'm actually only going to use one diamond on two stacked maroon pads for this floor. Okay, a couple things before we turn the buffer on. Um, one, remember that we're just trying to lightly blend in the, the top. So we want to run the buffer where it's floating. Also remember where your cut point is more towards the back and where your lighter feathering point is towards the front. So we're going to want to run this machine back and forth in a, in a backwards motion, okay? Um, and don't, don't get to the point where you're trying to heal it on anything. We'll do that in a couple spots, but remember we've only got one mil of sealer down and it's going to be pretty easy if we put a hip into this thing that we're going to do what's called a burn through and that's really what we're trying to avoid. So one thing we're going to look at right now is uh, on natural seal or Nordic seal, if it's a natural floor, no stain, we're not working on a dark species, it can be really hard to pick up your miss marks after you abrade it. So that's why we go back and do the wet tack. So I went ahead and created some fake burn throughs and it's easy to see because I know where they're at, uh, but if I've got a whole house and I'm trying to just find them in the house, it's, it's going to be a lot harder if I'm just trying to do it visually. So you'll see when we do the wet tack and we pull the, the uh, tack mop over the top, those are going to show up, but you got to be looking for them too. So you can't just be tacking and not paying attention. You got to look for and make sure you're trying to find any of those burn through marks. All right. So you can see once I pull over it where I'm back down to bare wood, it turns darker and shows that oak coming through again. And this is on top of the Nordic seal. And that's why, it, like I said, it, it may take a little bit for that to show up, but you'll see that darker wood show through, especially on top of something like Nordic seal that has so much pigment in it. So again, take your time, maybe have somebody watching while you're tacking, wet tacking, just to be looking for those misses and those burn throughs. So now our sealer is dried. We've gone ahead and uh, we abraded it. We did our repairs. We were ready to put on that second coat. But you know, during our schools, we're always talking about what did you learn? You should learn something on every job and make sure you write it down so that you can one, share it with your other uh, employees, colleagues, technicians, um, and so you remember it. So we've learned a couple things working through the best practices on this floor. And one of them is definitely the, the abrasion helps blend everything out. So as we were working through this floor, uh, I thought maybe I didn't abrade it enough. Because we say work quick, work fast, work smooth. Um, but you also want to make sure that you do abrade it enough because that really helps blend everything out. So I did go through and uh, abrade everything one more time with our same setup. So we had two stacked maroon pads. We had two diamond uh, 240 grit discs on there. And I think it really helped even everything out by going through and abrading it one more time. The other thing is before abrasion, so after you put down your sealer coat, that's really the best time to look for and correct heavy marks, um, even streaks, stuff like that. Um, we found out that after you abrade, those are really hard to see. They're still there and they may show up then when you put your finish coats on but go ahead and take care of those while you still have that sheen of the sealer to help uh, highlight those things. Because uh, again, once you abrade, those are gonna be really difficult to, to correct. Um, also with streaks in the floor. You know, when we're doing our application with the T-bar, again, you naturally get not product coming over the top. If, you're, if you have that, then you're not applying it right. But you, you naturally get that little heavy mark that forms at the top of the, the T-bar applicator and definitely make your feathering pass to take those out. Again, we found streaks in the floor and trying to take those out later are probably one of the most difficult repairs to try to do and not have it still show up. And then lastly is uh, an exit plan. So whether you're working out of a long hallway or you're working, you know, you're working down your, your wall in your room, we know how hard it is sometimes to do that and keep everything nice and smooth, not have your puddle set up. So one thing you might even try is to go ahead and pull a dry line. So let's say if this is my wall, I'd work up to maybe this board, and then I'm going to take my cut-in pad, and I'm going to uh, 
pull up the rest of my puddle or I'm going to make sure my puddle runs out about right here, I'm going to take my cutting pad and I'm going to pull it right down this board seam. So I'm going to have a dry line. Basically, I'm going to have my own little transition area that I made. Some guys may even take blue tape, tape off that uh, board seam and then work up to it, pull the tape, and then again, you still have your dry line. That way then I can go down to my end wall and I can work all the way down and I don't have to worry about my puddle being here. I don't have to worry about the edges setting up. Um, that's going to be probably the hardest thing during application is just your exit. I mean, it usually is anyway, uh, whether with finish or with uh, other sealers, but definitely with the colored sealers, uh, you may want to pull a dry line as opposed to trying to mess around with that puddle. So those are the things uh, that we learned on this job, the things we're adding to our journal, the things that we'll share with our product management team, tech team, sales team, and sharing it with you guys. Now we're ready to apply our second coat. Two reasons you may want to put on a second coat. Uh, one is just to help even everything out. So we found that, you know, if you put down a first coat on, especially on certain species, uh, the product may look a little blotchy, a little uneven. Um, and that's regardless of whether it's amber seal, Nordic seal, natural seal, even regular sealers. Um, so we may want to put down a second coat just to try to even everything out. Uh, the other reason is you may have done your sample that way and you did two coats of the sealer to add more color because it's definitely going to do that. So you may want to do a second coat of sealer just to add more of that color to the floor, but uh, make sure that's what your customer is expecting and that's the sample that they signed off on. It's also a discussion if you're just doing a second coat to try to make it look more even. Uh, again, depending on which sealer you're using, you may need to have that discussion with the homeowner that you have to put on a second coat of sealer. It's gonna add a little more color. Make sure they're okay with that. So one, one area we're gonna talk about is during our abrasion is right next to the wall. So if you remember during the video, if you saw me come by the wall, then I might come down a little bit with the buffer, move back up and then go across. Or sometimes I even came all the way down with the buffer to make sure I was getting close as possible to the wall. Big mistake, don't do that. Because any time that I dwell just a little bit extra in one spot, and because of the cut point of the buffer, it's gonna take off more of the color. So now I've got a path of lighter color here that goes all the way across right there from that backside of my buffer, taking off a little more of the color. So when you're braiding, come up to the wall, come down, and then immediately go back. Don't dwell here at all, um, or that's what you're going to have to then try to fix. Hey, one other area I wanted to talk about was cutting in. So especially on this, you know, if you're working on a dark floor or something a little more difficult, because I, I didn't see it over on the, the natural, the unstained side, but when you're cutting in, and using the T-bar, what I would do is get as close to the wall as you can with your T-bar, uh, and then only cut in a little bit here. If you cut in out here, you know, and try to feather out way out into the floor, what I saw after the first coat was, you know, a little more color throughout this than where I was T-barring. Um, now, it went away after the second coat on the dark side, and I didn't see it at all on the, the lighter side, on the natural side, but just a note of caution, again, and that's one of the things you really have to watch out for is a difference in application rate between your cut-in pad and your T-bar. So if we can keep the majority of the floor just with the T-bar and just along our edges here is where I'm going to just do a short little cut-in to feather that out, um, I think that's perfect. And make sure that you don't leave too much there with your T-bar either. Otherwise, you'll just be feathering out, you know, a, a darker bar of, of white onto the floor. All right, so this is the area where we had left our T-bar mark out into the floor, our heavy mark. And we sanded and, and scraped this area right here back down, but we left the heavy mark over on this side. It's really hard to find this mark still in the floor. We knew it was over this area of darker grain, so we could find it. And it's still visible if you really know what you're looking for. But for the most part, where we scraped it down, it looks fine now. 
Um, it's going to be much less discernible, much uh, harder for the homeowner or floor owner to, to find and be concerned about. Um, but definitely over where we didn't take that heavy mark down, uh, it, it's still there and it jumps out a little more. So again, when you first put your sealer down, look for any heavy marks, try to take those down right then. Don't wait till you abrade because then it's a lot harder to find them. Um, but for the most part, that ended up being a good repair. So this is the area where we had the, the miss, right in this area. So when we uh, applied our first coat, completely missed this. And we had a big mess throughout here. So we treated both of these like stain repairs. Uh, we took our sandpaper. I didn't have heavy marks on this one, so just took our sandpaper, chased the grain out a little bit, took our maroon pad, chased it out a little more to feather that out into the floor, and then took some more amber seal and brushed that out and feathered it out to chase the grain as well. That repair came out great. Same on this side, we had a much bigger mess over here. I had some heavy marks coming cross grain. Um, so we made sure we took the scraper and took those down just a little bit. Um, then we took again our sandpaper, chased the grain with that, took our maroon pad, chased it, feathered it a little more with that, brushed on another coat. And then when we put the second layer of amber seal on this side, all of that came through great. Uh, this side looks excellent. Um, over here where we just had the single coat, uh, so we again treated it as a stain repair, um, brushed on another coat, feathered it out, and this area looks great. Uh, but of course where we didn't touch it, um, everything is still there and shows through. So the, the note is, after you put your sealer coats on, look for any repairs that you need to take care of. Heavy marks, thin marks, uh, misses, cross grain, uh, turn marks, anything that you might think you need to repair that's gonna show through. If you ever ask yourself the question, hmm, I wonder if that's gonna show through, it's probably gonna show through. So go ahead, take a little time to at least mute it, uh, mute the effects of it, um, if you're not taking it all the way out, and treat everything as a stain repair. Okay, so now we're back to our streaks in the floor. And we're showing it on the dark side just because that's where they're really gonna show up. Um, so we did, tried to do a repair where we did a single coat, where we were gonna do an additional coat. You can still see both of them. And the real point to this is during your application, go ahead and make those feathering passes to take out any of those top streaks. Uh, it's very difficult after the fact, especially if you're working on a darker stained floor uh, or you're working on a dark species and you're trying to put this product on, uh, it's gonna be real hard to get those streaks and stuff out of the floor. So you can see on the single side that I just tried to soften that up, but I actually went down, uh, I'm back down to the stain in spots, so now that brown tone is completely showing through. Uh, although I did soften the streak a little bit, uh, it still doesn't matter, I can still really see it. On the side where we put an additional coat over the top, uh, I can still see it. Yeah, we did soften it. Yes, the second coat did help. Um, but I don't even think you need to be a professional and know what you're looking for. To me, that stands out uh, pretty sharply. So again, the point is not on repairing streaks, but preventing streaks. So during your application, as you see those streaks kind of appearing, go ahead, pat out, make your feathering pass uh, to eliminate those streaks during the application. You won't have to worry about doing any repairs. So now we're gonna look at our burn through marks that we had from our uh, abrasion step. And we left them, we didn't do a repair on these just because we wanted to have a good example of what they're gonna look like uh, if you don't take care of them. So again, you may have one in the floor, you may have 200 in the floor uh, if you're not careful with your abrasion. Um, and it's important again to go with that wet tack to make these sh uh, show up. So on the natural seal side, um, it's actually pretty difficult to see in this example because mainly it goes across some of the darker grain. So even though you've got that natural white oak color kind of showing through, uh, it is a little more difficult if you were just walking through a job to pick up on this one. If it was on a, a little planer cut board uh, and something with a little more uh, even color to it, it might be harder to pick up. But the one on our Nordic seal floor uh, definitely pops out, um, mainly because we've got that contrast of more white pigment in the Nordic seal and it definitely makes it easier to see. So in repairing these, as we find these in the floor, what we would have done is, again, treat it just like that stain repair. 
So we could take our, maybe lightly scraping, but probably just our sandpaper, 120 grit or whatever you finished with. Sandpaper, uh, slightly chase the grain with that. Chase the grain with your maroon pad a little bit. Take a little bit of the sealer, pour it in those areas, and then take your fine brush and feather that out into the floor, even chasing the grain a little bit with that sealer touch-up application. And those should be completely unnoticeable than if you treat them like that. With the sealer coat or coats now final and the floor looking great, we now want to protect this color under a couple coats of Bona Waterborne finish. All right, so just one last note on the outcome of our floors here. On the natural unstained side, you can see that everything came out beautiful. Uh, whether it's Nordic Seal, Natural Seal, Amber Seal, all the products really easy to use, whether we're doing a single coat, double coats. We still want to follow those best practices. We still want to make our feathering passes uh, to get rid of any top streaks that may form. You still want to watch out for heavy marks, light marks, misses, uh, anything that you would do even if you were putting down a, a regular clear sealer too. But you can see on, on this side of the floor, everything came out really great. And, this is the normal application that we see people using these products for, especially for that Nordic Scandinavian look is, you know, natural seal one or two coats or Nordic seal one or two coats, covering it with clear coats. You can see the, the beautiful results that you can get. All right, so now we're here on the, the darker side of the floor, either to represent uh, working on a darker species or uh, like we did here to uh, use one of the brown tone stains, this being uh, Bona Antique Brown. So the point here is not that you might necessarily want your floor to look like this or the homeowner would want it to look like this, but they might. Uh, so if that's one of the options, you know, you've got these options to, to use. Obviously the Amber Seal, very regular application uh, for this product to give some more pop, more vibrancy, give it a little darker tone by adding that amber tone to a, a, a brown toned wood stain. On Nordic Seal and Natural Seal, Again, it's one way that you can get a slight antiquing look uh, or really wash out a total stain color by using two coats of Nordic Seal. I would definitely say adding two coats, uh, especially when you're using it over a darker floor like this, makes everything a lot more even, um, but it also doubles that color. So again, the point is know what products you're using, know if they have pigment or not in them, know what your watch outs might be during application, or make sure that the homeowner knows what the final look of the floor is going to be.